a really big piece of free training over on the Digital DJ Tips website, which I'll show you in a minute. And I'll give you a link as to where you can go and look at that. And it's all about improving your DJ music programming. Because music programming is one of the things that people say can't be taught, and that's rubbish, it can be taught. It's not all about experience, although that is a big part of it. There's lots of things you can do to get yourself to the point where you, it looks like you just, you've got every next tune at your fingertips. They're flying onto the decks, it looks like it's effortless. Every mix you do seems to be right, every choice of music seems to be right. So that's what we're gonna be looking at here. Uh, for the next 20 minutes or so, half an hour or so. Uh, I'm just gonna turn down the volume on the comments, which is lovely. It's lovely to have so many comments coming in, but I always forget to turn that volume down so you hear click, 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 click all the way through. Anyway, welcome if you're on YouTube, welcome if you're on Facebook, welcome if you're on our Global DJ Network Facebook group. It's good to have you wherever you, wherever you are watching this. If you're watching the replay, it's because you were not subscribed and you weren't notified about the live. You can fix that by subscribing uh, and then clicking show notifications. Uh, and if you are watching this on the replay thinking this seems a bit of a long video, that's because it is because you're watching a live show. There's going to be comments from you. So please let us know what you think in the comments on YouTube and Facebook underneath. And we're going to have a lot of interaction as well as we do every week. So Tuesday Tips Live is from us here at Digital DJ Tips. We're the people behind Rock the Dance Floor, the top selling book on how to DJ over on Amazon. We're also the people behind digitaldjtips.com and we have nearly two dozen DJ courses that teach everything from very, very beginner stuff all the way up to running your own DJ business, scratching, producing, uh, and everything in between. So do go check those out as well. But now it's all about this half hour and it's all about some free training for you here on Facebook, on the Digital DJ Tips page, on the Global DJ Network group, and over on YouTube. Uh, and we're talking about the seven ways that you can improve your DJ music programming today. So just before we get started, a few early hellos from you guys and girls uh, over here on the comment cam. Uh, so uh, my man Phil says, DJ Dash TV, you've turned Tuesday mornings into one of my favorite days of the week. Well, it's good to know that. Um, uh, hello from D Dubai, says Inea. These are all over on our YouTube page. Jeffrey on YouTube. Good morning, Phil. Good to see you. Good to see you too as well, Jeffrey. Uh, and lots of you also saying hello. No time to say hello to everyone, but Rajul, it's good to have you here. Always uh, good to have uh, lots of our regulars here. Uh, and uh, hello to Ross uh, on Facebook as well. Hello to Laurie. Laurie, it's always great to have you on our broadcast and in the community. Uh, so welcome to you here today, Laurie. Uh, DJ Cool Thing is in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, which is pretty cool. Thank you for that. Uh, Floriando, uh, Fiorlando says, hi, Phil. Thank you for doing this. Much respect. You're very welcome. Uh, and uh, all right then. So I'm going to get straight on with it. Uh, I'm going to correct that camera just so that you can see the top of my shiny head there. Uh, we're talking about the seven ways that you can improve your DJ music programming. Music programming can't be taught. Rubbish. It can be taught. And that's what we're talking about today. So let's get back to the main camera and we'll get started. Oh, look at that. There's a little sneak preview of what I'm up to at the moment, recording some stuff on this, the XDJ XZ from Pioneer. Uh, we're in the middle of recording some pretty cool stuff on that, which will be on the YouTube channel probably next week sometime, so keep an eye out for that. Not what I intended to show you today, but hey, no secrets here. Right, back to what we're meant to be doing. Okay, so seven ways that you can improve your DJ music program and get those sets singing. So number one is to get your back catalogue correct. Now there is no way you can play great DJ sets without a broad choice of music. And it's very easy at the beginning of your DJ journey to say, you know what, I'm just gonna get new stuff. New music is what matters to me. At the beginning of my DJ journey, long time ago now, I was like, I don't care about old music. There's so much good new music around that I don't need the old stuff. It's a big mistake. It's a very good idea to fill back your collection, to find those gems, to find those songs that people have maybe forgotten about that work really well in your sound and in what you're doing at the moment. It shows a breadth of knowledge. It will surprise people who are on the dance floor or not on the dance floor even more, uh, even more importantly, uh, with stuff that maybe they didn't think you'd play, they didn't think you were good enough or that you'd, you'd done your homework enough to dig back through time and find those classics. Having tunes from back in the day, uh, and from years previous to the year that we're currently DJing in is a great way of improving the way you DJ because it gives you more choice. It gives you more music that you can potentially play. A really good way of just checking how you're doing is to click that date column 
in your library and organize your music by date and try and have at least a few tracks in the sound and the style that you like from all the years or tracks that at least are complementary to the sound and style that you like going back through all the years that people on your dance floor are likely to have been going out at least but even further back than that. So filling out your collection with stuff that isn't brand new is a great way of improving your DJing from the off. So how are you going to do this? Well, you can buy uh, you can buy compilation CDs on eBay, places like that, uh, that are just the best of this, 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 and this. You know, for two or three dollars, you could get a CD with 150 tracks on it. Doesn't matter if there's only three or four you like, just rip them and get them in your collection. Of course, you can look through iTunes and Amazon and stores like that. But also some DJ download pools are particularly good at back catalog. DMS or direct music service is one of them. So point number one, in improving your DJ programming is just to get a wider choice of music by getting music that isn't brand new into your collection. Spend some time crate digging. Find those classics other people have forgotten. So point number two is to have a new music system. Now we teach this all the way from the very beginning of our journeys with you. Uh, if you've got the book, by the way, if you want the book, just go join Digital DJ Tips. Uh, head over to the website, click join anywhere, and we'll give you a copy of the book for free. You can download it, PDF. Uh, in the book, we talk a lot about having a weekly system for going through, shortlisting, choosing the new music that you uh, are going to allow into your DJ library this week. It's really important to have a new music system because just like it's important to fill out your collection from the past, it's important not to miss stuff from right now. So the best way to do that is to have your favorite sources of music discovery. It could be radio stations, could be chart shows, could be specialist music shows on your local radio. It could be obviously your favorite Spotify genre playlists, that kind of thing. And to be always noting the tunes you like, shazamming them, making a quick note in a book or whatever. But then once a week, going through that stuff, going down a few rabbit holes. If there's an artist you like, looking at other stuff they've done. Once a week, do that and come up with a short list of tunes and then go and listen to those tunes and decide the ones you want to add to your collection and have a set time to do that, Saturday mornings or you know Sunday evening when your other half is watching talent shows on TV or something. Get your headphones on, get your laptop on your, on your lap and, uh, and sit there and do it. But try and program it in regularly. Have a new music system that is regular, that's in your calendar and that you do without fail. That way you've kind of got it both covered. You're filling in the older stuff from the first point we had and you're getting new music regularly. You don't want to be leaving that. You don't want to be missing the new music because if you do that, again, you're just stopping yourself having the best tunes at your disposal when it comes to playing DJ sets. And you can only play a set that's as good as the music you've got, right? So there's our first two points. Uh, get a great back, ca back catalogue and uh, have a new music system that works for you. Lots of comments coming in, so I'll do point number three, then we'll head back to those comments. So point number three, and by the way, there's an article about all of this. I'm going to give you a link to it at the end that we've just published from Stacey, one of our, uh, one of our feature writers. Really great article that pulls all this knowledge together. I'll give you the link for that afterwards. Right, so point number three is work on your sound. Now, if you're a mobile DJ and all you play is gigs where you turn up and granny's there and the kids are there and you know, you really have to play what people want. But if you're playing residences, if you're playing bars, if you're playing lounges, if you're playing club gigs, if you've got an internet radio show, all that kind of thing, well, now you've got a chance of making your own sound. And so it's important to work on that. It's important to say, what is my sound? Now, there's a couple of traps you can fall into here. You can start playing music that no one wants to hear. That's never a good thing. So you've always got to have half an eye on the dance floor. Or you can say, oh, you know, this genre is really popular right now. I'm going to go all in for this genre. And the problem there is when that genre stops being popular, you're high and dry. So it's better off to say, what kind of songs do I like? What kind of music do I like? Do I like, what kind of rhythms do I like? You know, am I into kind of Latin rhythms? Am I into uh, tropical rhythms? Do I like harder, kind of more industrial stuff? And then move on to melodies. Do I like melody? Do I not like melody? Do I like my melodies to be dreamy? Do I like them to be dark? Do I like them to be a little bit more minimal? Uh, then maybe move on to vocals. Do I like vocal tracks or not? How often do I like to play vocal tracks? What kind of vocal tracks are they? Are they chopped up housey or are they big songs? Go through all the kind of elements of music. And the way you do this is by looking through your collection and seeing what you genuinely love, right? That is your sound. Uh, and chuck out the stuff that's not like it. Try and get a collection of music that is that sounds like you and that crosses more than just one genre and that has tracks in that are popular as well as tracks that only kind of you like. Uh, and if you can get that mix, you'll find that you've got something that is starting to sound like your signature 
but is still able to play to a kind of at least a reasonable kind of mix of crowds. Uh, and so working on your own sound is a really nice way once you've got the old music, once you've got new music that you're getting religiously, and then you're thinking, what's my sound? What's my take on all of this? Well, now we get into the point where you're programming great DJ sets just by putting a bit of thought into it and a bit of work into the music you're collecting. Now, before we move on to points four, five, six, and seven, which we'll do in one big chunk, I wanna head over to the comments. We are talking today about improving your DJ music programming, how to play great sets where the tracks just fly out of the box onto the decks. Uh, so if you've got any comments, questions, feedback, queries, get them typed in underneath on YouTube, underneath on Facebook, and I will be reading them out uh, now and at the end. And if you're enjoying this, please do hit share. It really helps us to do this. Go on, do it now, hit that share button, uh, and uh, that will get this out to your friends and help us to do uh, this. This thing we do for the whole community out there, we want many people as possible to see this, right? So don't be selfish, selfish, pass it on. Right, that done, let's head over and get some more of your live comments. So. Uh, what have we got here? This channel is gold, says Designer Dave. Well, thank you very much for that, Designer Dave. It's uh, good, that, uh, good to know that uh, we're doing so well so easily. Uh, Michael says, good morning from uh, Wonder Mike in Jamaica. Mike, it's always good to have you here. Uh, all right then, so I'm going to scroll down now past everyone saying hello, Brylan and George and Cool Hunk and Frank and Aaron and Edgars and Derek and DJ Tantrum M and uh, all you guys and girls. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, uh, I have to pull this one up because it's quite funny. Uh, it's uh, Joe says, I'm Joe, I'm sitting in the rain waiting for my partner who's at the doctor's. I hope your partner's all right, Joe. Uh, all right then, so um, Frank says, uh, invent an app where you can analyze your tracks and implement your hot cues that would be a huge game changer. You know, mixed in key actually helps you to uh, put automatic hot cues on things. So if you've got mixed in key, go and have a look at that. Uh, all right then, DJ Dash TV identifies what I was saying earlier. Weddings are 90% classic party tracks, 10% new tracks or less, probably less than 10% new tracks, I agree with you. Um, trimming your music collection is a good idea. Thank you for making this point, Jose, who says, I trim my music to 429 songs, the best funk R&B, hip hop, and 80s, 90s, and early noughties. Now, this is a good idea. You know, when you're adding music to your collection, be very careful, take music out as well as adding it. Don't get this big collection full of stuff you haven't played recently, you're not likely to play it again. So the author of the post that we've based today's live on is here. Hello, San Diego DJ Stacy. Uh, you can see what Stacy wrote over on this post on Digital DJ Tips, uh, which is live now, uh, Beginner's Guide to Music Programming. So I'm gonna give you a link to this at the end of today's live, uh, but Stacy has gone into a lot of detail on everything I've said here. Uh, so there's a lot more links, she goes into a lot more of the thinking behind a lot of this stuff. So this is something that you guys and girls can access straight after this live, and I will show you how to do that. Um, DJ, uh, DJ in Nemesis, I think is your name, says hello from Philadelphia. Uh, I know a lot of people like older, but it makes it extra nice when I find something new that the older, old school listeners like as well, says John. I think switching from old to new to old to new is one of the best things you can do, John. I love, both, I love going in both directions. Thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, Terence says, great tips here. I feel out of the loop if I haven't listened to the radio or seen the charts for about two weeks. I've got a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old kid, and it's awesome because they love pop music, right? So we listen to the charts every week on a Sunday evening. They used to be on a Sunday evening in the, in the UK for years. They're not anymore. But down here in Gibraltar, they still are on good old Radio Gibraltar. So that's what keeps me up to speed with pop music. Uh, Sean says, Phil, this is a fantastic video with so many good points. I spend so much time looking through old playlists and finding tracks that I may have forgotten but that complement what I'm doing now. So very cool words there from Sean. DJ Cool Thing, I use the iTunes store, my childhood CDs and BPM Supreme for my music library. I mostly DJ for elementary students. I did an elementary school dance this past Friday uh, and some of the songs I did uh, let us hang in there, uh, DJ Cool Thing, but thank you for sharing that as far as you, as far as you got to type. Um, all right then, um, so uh, I struggle with this a bit, says Eddie Paradise. Um, I don't really want to compromise on the tunes I play, but I guess that's why they don't have, I don't have many gigs. Well, you kind of got your own solution and your own answer there, Eddie. Start making music, get yourself a hit in the Beatport charts, then you can play what the hell you want at your gigs, Eddie. That's the way out of that one. What record pools do you recommend? Well, we've recommended DMS, Direct Music Service. We like BPM Supreme, we like DJ City, we like Promo Only and Zip DJ. There's a few for you there. 
Um, I recommend performing short edits to maximize your performance, says Delmar. Yeah, short edits. This is where you get intro, verse, chorus out of there. You can get these from DJ download pools. You can also make them yourselves. In fact, over on the uh, website, uh, we've got an article coming up. This is our website. Uh, this is the article we're talking about today, but there's an article coming up on making your own DJ edits. In fact, I think it's already live. Uh, it shows what I know. Uh, you think I would know what was live on our website, wouldn't you? But uh, there was an article on DJ edits very recently that was published. So if I can see it uh, right now, I will share it with you. Uh, there we go. How to make DJ edits quickly with Serato Studio. So if you want to know how to do this, head over to Digital DJ Tips. You can get a month free trial of Serato Studio, which is a great piece of software. And Mark has given you not only uh, an article, but a video here on how to make your own edits in Serato Studio. So there you go. You can head over there uh, and do that. Right, let's get back to the comments. Laurie says, I like the idea of a personal style. There are DJs whose selections I really enjoy and it's their style selections that keep me coming back. Time to sort through my world, my world and dark ambient collections. Dark ambient, you're a girl after my soul there, Laurie. That is my home listening as well. Uh, Delmar says, I recommend performing short. Oh no, we've done Delmar's comment. Thank you very much for that, Delmar. Um, so as Dan, uh, Dan Jason Price says, the late Wolfman Jack had said, DJs are ambassadors of yesterday's music and today. So thank you very much for that. Right, we're talking about the seven things you can do to improve your DJ music programming. Uh, so let's head back over to the main front of classroom camera and let's carry on. So we've done uh, improve your back catalog, have a new music system, uh, work on your sound. So number four, have a crate for every gig. That means every gig you're playing, just get yourself a crate on the side of your DJ software or a folder or whatever you want to call it, whatever it is called, and drag music into there that you want to play at this gig. Aim for about twice the amount of music that you're likely to play. So you've got a two hour gig, aim for about four hours worth of music. Look through your history lists at stuff that's worked before. Look through your must plays, your new stuff you want to play, the tracks that you think will work well from your older stuff. And then have a think about the audience that might be there. Maybe go and do some research at the venue and have a look at who's there. And work out, get an instinct for the kind of music you might want to play. Aim to think very hard about every track you put into that playlist and into that crate or into that, uh, into that folder. And get about twice the amount of music you need. That's the sweet spot. That means if you play from that folder rather than your whole collection, you'll have just enough music to move around and react to what the crowd are doing, but not so much that you spend all your time staring at the screen. Uh, because what you want to be staring at is the crowd. And what you want to be doing is getting into your own music because guess what? You get into your music, you're having a good time, they're going to start having a good time. That's when that DJ to and fro thing starts happening. So build yourself a crate of about twice the amount of music you need. That's point number four. That's going to help you to just look effortless behind the decks and it will look to people like you're just finding track after track after track that works well. But in fact, you've already done the hard work by getting your collection of, I don't know, a thousand tunes or two thousand tunes down to about a hundred, right? Which is uh, you know, it might be the number that you've chosen because that's twice the amount of tunes you're likely to play. So there's a big tip there. So number five, um, take notes during your set. This is so important. It's so easy to forget this. The reason we want to do this is you're going to forget things that happen on the night uh, almost immediately. So you, you've got an edit that you don't like. Make a note. You've got a track where you've got your cue points wrong. Make a note. You've got a track where the beat grids aren't right. Make a note. Uh, you've got a version of a song that's just not working for you. Make a note. Uh, you want to do a short edit of a song, make a note. Where are you going to do this? I actually like doing this in the comments column on the actual library itself. Just double click on comments and make a quick note. And then you can, after your set, you can go and sort by comments and look down there and see all the notes you made and do the work. You know, doing the work afterwards. And I want to actually add to this, look through the set you play. There's a history in all DJ software where you can see what you play. Look through it the next morning and say what worked and what didn't. It'll help you for the, the next set that you play. So make notes, make notes and look through your, your set that you played as soon after as possible. Because it's like, we watch back these recordings, right? I'm broadcasting live to you now, but we watch back and we say what worked and what didn't and what can we change next time? And it's just the same with the DJ set. Watch, uh, listen back um, to, or, or look through your history at least. And if you've recorded it even better, listen back as well and uh, see what you can improve and look at the notes you made at the time. So point number six, uh, and I love this one, in your DJ software, in the main library, you can't actually sort those tracks out. It's just the main library. You can click and sort by artist, you can click and sort by BPM, you can click and sort by key, you can click and sort by whatever you want, 
But you can't say, mm, that one would be good there, and that one would be good there, and that one would be good there. As soon as you've dragged some tracks into a crate or a playlist, you can. So make use of that. Order your playlist. So, so now it goes from being an unordered crate to a ordered playlist. Now you're not gonna play from the top to the bottom, just track after track after track. That's not what DJs do, but it does give you a rough order. So you've got stuff you, you'd like to play at the beginning of the night near the top and moving down through the night towards the end. And that means that when you know songs that go well together, um, are in the same set, you'll spot them and you'll put them together. You know, we used to do this in the old days with records. We'd put all our records out on the floor and say, which ones am I likely to want to play first? They'd go near the front of the crate and then the next ones and then the next ones until the, the end of night bangers were at the back of the crate. And you wouldn't always, in fact, you would never play them in that order, but you'd know you were starting roughly at the front of the box and working towards the back. Do that in your playlist because you can, because they'll all let you order your music. Again, why do we do this? Because when you're DJing, instead of having to look all the way through all your music in that playlist, you can look at the two or three tracks around it and say, yep, that one next, yep, that one next, yep, that one next, and suddenly it really looks like you're finding tunes in seconds because you are, because you did the work ahead of time. So this all feeds back, right? Because your intuition about what tunes are gonna go with other tunes comes from making notes. It comes from making previous playlists and all the stuff we've already talked about. So put your songs in an order once you've got them into a, into a playlist. Turn that crate or folder into an actual list of, this is a potential order I might wanna play these songs in. Remember, you've got double the amount, so you're never gonna play all of them. That's not the point. The point is to do a bit of the work ahead of time. Uh, so, and the final point, number seven, uh, is um, have a go-to first 10 minutes or first 15 minutes. You're gonna be very nervous at the beginning. So just have two or three songs that you've planned for not only tonight, but any kind of set. So um, Stacey goes in, oh, excuse me, Stacey goes into a lot of detail in the article about different types of set openers you might want. And also think about how you might want to close your night. You know, to me, the last night of the, the last song of the night is the most important song. Why? Because everyone goes home singing it. So if you pull an absolute blinder out of your box at the end, that's the only song they'll remember the next morning. They'll say, that DJ was good. Did you remember what they played at the end? So, you know, the, the way you open and end your sets for different reasons is important. Opening, you're likely to be nervous, so have two or three songs worked out so that you just can get straight into it and off you go. You know, you're putting your best foot forward right from the start. And ending, you really wanna make a splash at the end. So it's all right to practice those two things. And again, you know, what we're doing here is hacking our DJ music programming. If we've got a great beginning, if we've got a great end, and if we've done everything else on that list, we've got great old music, we've got great new music because we've got a good system. We've worked on our sound. So these aren't just random songs, they're songs that sound like us. Um, we are actually bothered to pack a crate, so we're not just playing from our whole library. Um, we've been taking notes every gig, so we've been improving our playlists, improving the way we do stuff. Um, and our sets are not just random tracks in a crate, we've actually thought about the order so that they are all at our fingertips even more than if we'd, we'd just been playing from a random crate. And that final point, having the beginning and ending worked out. All these things, guess what they're gonna do? They're going to improve your DJ set programming. Your music program is going to get better. Yes, music programming is an art as well as a science. Yes, experience helps you to do a good job of it. But can it be taught? You're damn right it can be taught, and those seven points are a great place to start. So again, thank you to Stacey for presenting me with this article that I'm now presenting to you live. I'm gonna go back to your comments and then I'll give you that link so you can go and read the article that Stacey wrote for us. Uh, after this or whenever you've got a second. Go on, let's go back to live then, <coughs> to the live comments then. All right then, <coughs> Jimmy says, Record Box has a great history playlist. Uh, I see everything I play, and you're right, I see what works, what songs go together, and maybe a better order to put it in. It really helps, it does indeed. Uh, Eddie says, nice one, Phil. A crate playlist and ordering will be done for this weekend. Great to hear. Um, so uh, I highlight the songs that need manual adjustments in a chosen color, pink. Highlighting by color, what a great idea, uh, Jose. Most DJ software will let you add colors to tracks. That's a great idea, thank you for that. Um, I highlight the songs that need manual adjustments in a chosen color pink and also the ones that are a bit explicit I highlight in red. Uh, what a great idea. I love the fact that we get stuff that we hadn't thought of on these lives. Uh, Delmar says on tractor, preparation is the section for setting up a crate for your next event. Set up via BPM will make your life easier. So thank you for that. Eddie, that crate idea is a really good one. Simple but makes a lot of sense. Cheers. Um, all right then. 
Um, Danny says, I make micro crates of groups of songs that go together and one experimental crate with new songs to drop into my mix. It gives me a lot of freedom to plug in what the crowd wants and pull out new music all very quickly and seamlessly. You know, one great idea here generally is to have mini sets, whatever they are. You can't have too many mini sets of tracks. Stick them all in a folder if you're OCD and you can hide that folder when you're, you know, when you want, to, want everything to be neat and tidy. But you know, mini sets are a great way of just organizing the chaos of your music collection. So thank you for that, Danny. Uh, Mac Live says, one thing I'm struggling with is trying to stream my sets via a mobile phone. Connecting via a cable from my DJ controller to mobile for decent stereo audio. You probably need to get yourself either the Pioneer DJ Rec app, if you're DJing from Pioneer gear that's compatible with that, or an external audio interface, or something like Evermix. This is Evermix. It's a little box that you plug between your phone and the DJ, uh, and the DJ uh, console you're using, whether it's a controller or a deck uh, or whatever. Plug this into your controller, plug that into your phone, and it will let you record and actually and actually um, share your set through the Evermix app. That's Evermix, really good little device. Review of that coming soon when I get two seconds to myself. Pop that back there. Uh, all right, I hope that helps, Mac. Uh, all right then, um, I love the start and end crates idea, says Jinso Henryo. Um, I always do the start crate. Oftentimes I forget to make an end crate. Sometimes making a close out or slow down crate though. I often tend to make things more boring towards the end so I can get everyone to leave and go home. Yeah, we've all been there. Play that go home song. Um, I check my history in Serato after every session, including my practice sessions. Good on you, Rob. Uh, and John says, I know what you mean. Uh, uh, actually, no, well, uh, thank you for that comment, John, but I'm going to try and stick on topic here. Uh, Jose says, one should be able to shuffle that playlist once and start the night with that first song, work backwards or forwards. Of course, the BPMs need to be close. Well, not always. There's good ways of mixing between different BPMs, of course. Um, but anyway, thank you for that. I use that Evermix and it's great, says DJ Iggy. Uh, Evermix looks interesting, says John. You know, just go and Google Evermix. It's great. Uh, Dane says, any ideas on starting to downsize an already large library without just removing and starting over? Um, I did read the book and I know I have way too much music. I really need to downsize, but with an already huge library, I'm struggling on a place to start. If you haven't played a track in the last year and you don't honestly think hand on heart you're going to play it in the next year, Chuck it out. I promise you that'll get your library down 80%, Dane. So that's my, my tip for you there. Right, <clears throat> we're done here now. A um, little bit of news for you. Massive course launch coming from Digital DJ Tips tomorrow, I think. If you've ever wanted a part-time mobile DJ business, keep your eye on the website or even better, make sure you're a member and keep an eye on your email inbox because we've got the course for you. Very, very exciting. Uh, I've, I've made this one myself. I'm looking forward to bringing it to you. How to have a part-time mobile DJ business. So that's coming tomorrow. Keep an eye open for the opening offer on that, but be quick, it won't be for long. Meanwhile, I did promise you that I would show you where, whoops, where you can uh, get this article. <coughs> Excuse me, back end of a cold here. Uh, so uh, I'm still a little bit hoarse from that, I have to say. Uh, a Beginner's Guide to DJ Music Programming. It's written by our uh, feature writer, Stacey, and it goes through everything that I've just talked about in a lot more detail than I've had time to talk about. So Stacey goes through the back catalogue, the new music system, cultivating your sound, creating a crate for every gig, taking notes during your sets. Uh, she tells how she managed to learn to DJ Latin music from scratch. So that's a great uh, little aside there how to turn your crates into set lists, and uh, how to work out your go-to openers and closers with some extra advice and some actual track suggestions there as well. Plus a challenge, a no repeat opener challenge. So lots more material there. If you've enjoyed this, head over to there to find out more. Uh, and you can get that from our website. It is, uh, I'm just gonna try and get out of there so I can pull it up and show you. Just give me two seconds, the computer is being a little bit, there we go, I'm back. Computer's being a little bit not playing ball there. Uh, here it is, djtips.co slash programming. So go to djtips.co slash programming, and from there, uh, you'll be able to see that article from Stacey. Right, we're done. Thank you very, very much, everyone, uh, for being here today. It's been awesome to help you out as ever. Please do hit the share button if you've enjoyed this. It really does help us to keep bringing you these. Uh, meanwhile, from me here in the Digital DJ Tips office, as ever, get good, get out there and make the moments, and I will see you next Tuesday prompt for another Tuesday 